Hi guys! So we are going to continue our read aloud, um, A Tangle of Knots, today. Mr. Goldblatt read you all the prologue, um, which was really interesting, right? We ended up with Mason losing his suitcase on the train. Um, so, moving along, we're going to read chapter one today. And as we turn from the prologue, we see the next page looks like this. 53 years later. So we have a big jump in time. Um, and then as we continue to flip, we see a nice recipe, Miss Mallory's peach cake. It says, a, cake's that, a cake that's sweet, simple, and hard to dislike. So then the next couple of pages are the actual recipe for the cake, right? So um, it's just a simple, it's just a recipe. There's nothing yeah. special about it. But um, yeah, it has the, some ingredients are butter, eggs, canned peaches, baking soda, cinnamon, salt, all the regular stuff you would put in a cake, right? And um, the actual beginning of the chapter starts with chapter one, Katie. Okay, so let's continue to read. Um, and let's see uh, if we can make any connections between the prologue and this. We might not be able to yet, but we'll see. Okay, so Miss Mallory's home for lost girls in Poughkeepsie, New York, was technically an orphanage, but there were hardly ever any orphans there. In fact, most days, if you peeked inside the window, you would see only one orphan, all by herself, but hardly lonely, standing on her tiptoes at the kitchen counter, baking a cake. Cadence, that was her name. She was standing there now. She was standing there now, Katie, deciding what to add to her bowl of batter. If you squinted through the window, you could just make her out from the chin up. Katie was barely a wisp of a thing. You'd see the shiny crow, crow black hair that hung smooth as paper from the top of her head to the bottoms of her earlobes. And you'd see the petite, pixie-ish, Miss Mallory calls them, features of her face. Tiny nose, tiny mouth, tiny ears. Katie's eyes, however, those were large in comparison to the rest of her. Large and dark and round and set just so on a face, the color of a leaf that has clung too close to its tree. See some nice figurative language here. I'm going to read that line again. Large and dark and round and said just so on a face, the color of a leaf that has clung too long to its tree. Flour, sugar, butter, eggs. Katie studied the bowl in front of her. She closed her eyes, digging into the furthest reaches of her brain to figure out what would be the perfect addition to her cake. At last, her thick black lashes fluttered open. She had it. Cinnamon. She would make a cinnamon cake. No one knew exactly when Katie's talent for baking had first emerged. I'm going to stop for a second. So I, in the prologue, you guys are going to have a PDF version of the text so that you can actually look at the words. But you're going to notice that every time you see the word talented, it's with a capital T. So I want you guys to stop and think when you see that and try to determine um, why the author might have chosen to make the T, talent, the T in talented capital. Um, like in the middle of a sentence. Okay. So it says, no one knew exactly when Katie's talent for baking had first emerged, just as no one knew exactly where she had come from. But one thing was certain. Katie was a talented baker. She could bake anything really. Pies, muffins, bread, casseroles, even the perfect pizza if she put her mind to it. Oops. But what Katie loved above all else was baking cakes. All she needed to do was, was to close her eyes and she could imagine the absolutely perfect cake for any person, anywhere. A pinch more salt, a touch less cream. It was 100% certain that the person she was baking for would never have tasted anything quite so heavenly in all his life. In fact, what the orphanage lacked in orphans, it made up for in cake baking trophies. First five place trophies from the Sunshine Bakers of America annual cake bake off lined the front hall, one for every year that Katie had entered from the age of five, when her oven mitts swallowed her up to her elbows. No matter who entered the competition, professional bakers, famous chefs with exclusive restaurants, none of their talents, capital T, were able to match Katie's, not for five years running. Katie's cakes were never the most beautiful or the most stunning. Last year, not one but two bakers had crafted 50-layer high masterpieces of sugary wonder, studded with frosted stars and flowers and figurines 
One even included a working chocolate fountain. Katie's single layer pistachio sheet cake had looked pitiful in comparison, but nonetheless, it had been the judge's favorite because Katie had baked it specifically for him. This year's Bake Off would be held in just one short week in New York City, a two hour drive away. Miss Mallory had already cleared space in the hallway for a sixth trophy. The kitchen door squeaked open and in, wal in, and in waltzed Miss Mallory, a polka dot tablecloth folded in her arms. Miss Mallory's perfect cake, as far as Katie was concerned, was just as scrumptious as she was. A nutty peach cake with cream cheese frosting. What did you come up with, Miss Mallory asked, crossing the room to peer into the cake bowl? Katie found the cinnamon in the cabinet above her and popped off the lid. Cinnamon, she replied, shaking the spice into the bowl. Katie had no need for measurements. A cinnamon cake three layers high. Miss Mallory took a deep breath of pleasure. And the frosting? Katie did not even need a moment to think. She knew the answer, sensed it the way other people could sense which way to walk home after a stroll in the woods. Chocolate buttercream with a hint of spice, she replied. Perfect, Miss Mallory said. Amy will love it. She snuck a finger out from under the tablecloth to poke a tiny glob from the bowl. I hope this fog finally gives up, she said, sighing as the taste of the batter hit her tongue. Katie had been so intent on her, on her baking that she hadn't even noticed the haze. She peered out the window. Out on the lawn, the thick mist obscured all but the legs of the picnic table, and puddles speckled the steps to the porch. It had been foggy the morning Katie was brought to Miss Mallory's, too. Katie had been much too young to remember it, but she'd heard the story so many times that the details were as real and comfortable as a pair of well-worn shoes. The damp smell of the dew outside, the mystery novel Miss Mallory, ha Miss Mallory had been reading when she heard the knock at the door, and most especially Miss Mallory's surprise at the arrival. I'd never seen a baby so small, Miss Mallory always told her, and with such a remarkable head of hair. There was a braid woven into it. Here Miss Mallory would trace the plates across Katie's scalp, making Katie's skin tingle delightfully. It was the most intricate braid I've ever seen, twisted in and about and around itself like a crown. Whoever gave you that braid was talented indeed. And again, we see talented with a capital T. Miss Mallory snuck one more fingerful of batter from the bowl. Perhaps we should move the party inside today, she suggested. But adoption day parties are always outside, Katie protested, slapping Miss Mallory's hand away playfully. There wasn't much consistency in the life of an orphan, new housemates coming and going like waves on a shore. But adoption day parties were always the same. Adoption day parties took place outside with presents and card games. It was difficult to play other sorts of games with so few people about. And a cake baked, uh oh. And a cake baked by Katie for the lucky little girl whose adoption day it was. People sometimes suspected, when they learned how few orphans lived at Miss Mallory's home for lost girls, that it must be a sorry excuse for an orphanage. But the truth was quite the opposite. The truth was that most of the orphans at Miss Mallory's found their perfect families astonishingly quickly. Miss Mallory had a talent for matching orphans to families. She felt a tug deep in her chest, she said, when she sensed that two people truly belonged together, and she just knew. Most of the little girls who came through the orphanage doors were matched within days of arriving, sometimes hours. I want you guys to think, is there a connection between talent with a capital T and this idea that this woman can have this feeling inside and match kids to family so quickly? Miss Mallory had famously matched one girl only seven minutes after she stepped off her train. They would send photos, those lucky little girls who had found their perfect families, and Miss Mallory would frame them, frame them and hang them in the front hallway just above Katie's row of trophies. Smiling kids, beaming parents. Katie had studied them carefully. Katie was the only orphan at Miss Mallory's who had ever stayed for an extended period of time. Oh, Miss Mallory had tried to match her. Over the years, Katie had been sent to live with no fewer than six families, loving, happy, wonderful families. But unlike with the other orphans, it had never quite worked out. Katie had always done her best to be the perfect daughter. And yes, she mammed and knowed, served and ate all her vegetables and went to bed on time. But no fewer than six times, Miss Mallory had come to return Katie to the orphanage 
long before her one-week trial period was over. I made a mistake, Miss Mallory always told her. That wasn't your perfect family. But Katie knew that Miss Mallory didn't make mistakes. Somehow, for some reason that Katie couldn't explain, the fault lay with her, and Katie vowed that if she ever got another chance with another family, she would do whatever it took to make it work. One day, she would have an adoption day party of her own. One day, she would bake the perfect cake for herself. Maybe, Katie said slowly, glancing outside at the beautifully foggy morning, maybe today's the day I'll meet my family. The very idea warmed her through just as much as the heat from the oven. She tugged an oven mitt onto each hand and opened the oven door, then set the cake pans on the center rack. Maybe, she said again, my real and true family will step right out of the fog. Hmm. And that's the end of chapter one. So, um, I want you guys to also think about the fact that Katie is not being matched to a family after all this time that she's been at the orphanage. Um, what prediction can you make about why that might be? Um, so follow the assignment instructions on the doc for today. Um, and let us know if you have any questions.